It's Thursday, November 11th, and the time for your Barbados Today morning news update. There is a call for government to suspend its Safe Zones initiative with immediate effect. It's coming from the Barbados Association of Medical Practitioners, which has chided government for its decision to incorporate Safe Zones without what it says was proper consultation. BAMS President Dr. Linda Williams contends that the safe zones were rushed and had serious implications for healthcare workers. She says that the suspension was necessary to allow for proper consultation among the relevant stakeholders. The consensus, Dr. Williams says, was reached by BAMS membership during a meeting on Monday, the same day the safe zones concept was rolled out. BAMP also met with the Minister of Health and Wellness, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, and other senior health officials on the matter. The Barbados Workers' Union is cautioning employers against using the COVID-19 pandemic to place employees on the breadline. The union maintains that workers must not be forced to choose between securing their livelihood or the well-being of others. Emmanuel Joseph tells us more. While stating its position on government's proposed safe zones, the union declared its unwillingness to fully embrace the initiative in its present form. The BWU said there are a number of questions and concerns which must be ironed out regarding the difference in timing for testing within the zones so that no group feels discriminated against. For instance, it says included would be questions on the potential impact on the employee's ability and right to work should there be a backlog of test results. In a specially prepared statement for Barbados today, the employee's representative body said there is need for more clarity on what constitutes a failure to comply and, conversely, with respect to the clients or patients, what mechanisms are being put in place for the protection of the workers. The union argued that many of the decisions made by some employers with regards to the vaccination of their staff have no legal precedent and will therefore require a consideration of the greater good. The union leadership said the pandemic by no means should be used as an opportunity for employers to take advantage of workers or to force them to choose between securing their livelihoods or the well-being of others. It contended that in light of the economic times and financial despair among families, it is also certainly not a chance to reduce headcounts and put workers on the breadline. Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. An appeal has been made for more resources to be made available to help prepare prisoners for life beyond bars. It has come from Assistant Chief Officer and Head of Inmate Rehabilitation at Her Majesty's Prisons Dodds, Anthony Holder. He was speaking during a forum on Tuesday at the Cave Hill Wesleyan Holiness Church. What we need more is still a crying down presence. We need more help. We need the education department and prisons to be run with the Ministry of Education. We need we need person from the, say, the psychologist, more psychologists. We got one drug, drug counselor who worked close to NCSA. We got one psychologist. We need more psychologists. We need more, more drug, 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 drug counselors. We need more educators. We need more of these here. Instead of that same prison door work, give us the help. Give us the, the professionals. Let me see a trained person with sex offenses, sex offenders. Do we have a, a sex offender? Do we need part of it? No, we don't. So a drug counselor, couple up or double up. Treat each person. We need more professional help. We need more person. We are doing it. And we are doing it we, 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 we are doing it efficiently with all the little resources. Wow, what can we do with more resources? There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine, and that makes them vulnerable and the eldest, she is vaccinated, and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80-year-old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves 
and get back to living. The news from other region, COVID-19 infections are increasing in some countries in the Americas after two consecutive months of decline. So says Director of the Pan-American Health Organization, Dr. Carissia Etienne, who revealed that over the last week, 700,000 new cases and 13,000 COVID-19 related deaths were reported in the region. We are seeing jumps in cases in parts of Colombia and Bolivia. In the Southern Cone countries, we've seen an, on, up, an upward trend after public health measures were re relaxed. In the Caribbean, while Cuba, Jamaica, and Puerto Rico have reported decreases in new infections, cases are rising in the Dominican Republic Trinidad and Tobago, and Barbados. The Cayman Islands and Dominica are also experiencing a high number of cases. The good news is that vaccinations continue to pick up in our region. Some 48% of people in Latin America and the Caribbean have been fully immunized against COVID. However, Dr. Etienne says vaccine coverage is still much lower in some countries and territories. In Jamaica, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Guatemala, less than one in five people have been vaccinated and protected. In Nicaragua, coverage remains in the single digits. And in Haiti, less than 1% of people have been fully vaccinated. This inequity must be addressed. PAHO is committed to helping countries in our region secure the vaccines that they need to protect their people. Though don through donations via COVAX and through direct procurement, we are already working with manufacturers to secure additional doses on behalf of our region. And finally, Global Health Agency United calls on all partners to dramatically increase funding for oxygen response. It has also joined the Every Breath Counts Coalition in urging high burden country governments to take action to reduce air pollution related pneumonia deaths. Director of Programs at UNITAID, Robert Matiru, issued the call ahead of World Pneumonia Day, which is observed on November 12th. 800,000 children die each year from pneumonia, which remains the deadliest infectious disease for children under five. Unless efforts to address pneumonia are increased, it's likely that most low- and middle-income countries will not meet the Sustainable Development Goal targets set for 2030, just nine years from now. To reduce deaths from pneumonia, particularly among children, we need more political commitment at all levels. We need additional investments, uh, particularly for transformative health products, such as those that measure the level of oxygen in children to detect severe disease, as well as access to oxygen itself, which will save lives. Lastly, we need more coordinated efforts among all partners at global, regional, and country level. Access to oxygen therapy is one of the defining health equity issues of our time, and the COVID-19 pandemic has thrown this into sharp relief. UNITAID, a global health agency focused on health innovation, is spearheading efforts as part of the Access to COVID-19 Tools Accelerator, Act A, to address entrenched market barriers to oxygen access, such as high pricing or lack of medical oxygen capacity. Together with multiple partners, UNITAID is working to assess and develop tailor-made solutions for countries, such as pressure swing absorption plants, which are medium-sized generators of oxygen, bulk liquid oxygen, as well as portable oxygen concentrators. In addition, we're supporting the human capital that's required to service and maintain this important equipment. On World Pneumonia Day, UNITAID calls on all partners at all levels to dramatically increase funding for the oxygen response to help us tackle COVID-19 today, but also sustainably invest in the health of so many for the future. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp.
We also on Aizumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.